decided, or we started to look or discuss putting an organ in this theater about a year ago, uh, late about March or April, with the uh, Mr. Trident, which is a director of uh, uh, bands and orchestra at Lakeside High School, and with Andrea Trident, Mrs. Trident, who is a director of choral uh, music at Lakeside High School. Um, she is also an organist, and they were very excited about having an organ to work with the orchestra, the band, and with the choir, and for other purposes that the, may be necessary, including silent films and stuff like that. So we started to look for an organ. Uh, we're, I've been friends with Vic Barsilio, the organ builder from Austin Town, for many years. And I mentioned it to Vic, and uh, he just ran with it and, and had talked to a guy by the name of Gary Ricker, who from Chicago, Illinois, um, works for a company that supplies organ parts electronic parts and he has one in his home and was interested in donating it to uh, an organization that would use it and it would still be available to the public. So Vic and I made a trip to Oak Forest, his home, Gary's home in Illinois and looked at the instrument, um, played the instrument and were very pleased with the sound of it um, and uh, the condition of it was in excellent shape. It was removed, Vic packed it, and we had brought it back to Ashtabula. Um, Dave Truesdale, Truesdale Trucking, was very instrumental in it, moving it back. Uh, now we started to assemble it, built the chambers, and on the stage, um, which are behind, or, or behind at the back of the auditorium, uh, are three stories tall, the first being housing the organ, uh, the console itself, and the pianos and the blower, the second housing all the pipes, and the third floor housing all the toy counters, the uh, drums and the xylophones, harp and uh, marimbas, things like that. Uh, so there's, we've been in the installation for about, uh, we started about June or July of last year, so we're nearing completion on that. Uh, the organ uh, is a theater pipe organ, which is slightly different than a traditional classical instrument, can do both functions. And as you've known, as I mentioned probably earlier, is a unit orchestra, which accompanied, well, originally accompanied silent films, but has had a resurgence in, in the last few years. Um, Lakeside High School will be one of, I'm not sure right now, but I, I'm up to about 20 to 30 high schools that have pipe organs in there and are used today. In the country? In the country. Uh, the Board of Education has been very supportive of us working on this, and we will be developing a support group to maintain and raise the funds to maintain the organ from this so it will not be a burden on to the Board of Education. You've had a, a, so you had a letter writing campaign soliciting donations. Yes, um, Glenn Warner was, was part of our committee. He uh, wrote a lot of letters and talked to a lot of people. We raised the money, about 150000 to install uh, the organ in here, replace the electronic switching uh, controls and uh, the wiring had to be brought up to current code, uh, even though it's low voltage, it had to be brought up to current, it was an old fashioned, so we upgraded all the wiring. Um, Victor Organ Company has replaced all the leather so that when the organ is done, it's, it's pretty much back to its original condition and will last for many, many years without a lot of maintenance other than tuning and, and little tweaks here and there. I don't know. You mentioned before about how it was shipped here. It was like a couple of different trucks. Yes, we had to, um, we sent actually three trucks, one up with the one one, the first one, but it wasn't, it was bigger than we anticipated and the mover did not want to damage anything in the pipes because they're soft and they can be crushed. So he brought back that and then turned around, took two additional trucks back to Chicago and packed up the rest of the work. So what he thought was going to get done in Pardon? One, what we thought was going to get done in one truck ended up having to take three. It took three because one, we didn't want to damage it and we, the packet, he wanted the packet. They were very careful. Um, Vic uh, had packed all the pipes in pipe racks, but they still could be crushed, the bigger ones. And so the moving company wanted to make sure that we did not have any damage or they weren't responsible for any damage. We've also moved the, the facade for the organ. There's a fake facade in front that has pipes. That came out of uh, Austin Town uh, from Victor Organ Company. Uh, had it, the 
band director, choir director, Joe wanted a facade that looked like the Cleveland Orchestra mm -hmm. or something that pipes behind the orchestra or behind the choir. So we've added that to the organ. The organ did not have a decorative facade. And so now we have a decorative facade. It, and the pipes on that have all been rebuilt uh, or repainted <laughs> and, uh, by the uh, ATEC, uh, Asheville County Technical and Career Center, and the automotive department. And so we'll introduce it in April to the community and to the school. The school students will have an assembly where we will introduce the organ and hopefully show two minimal silent films, or small, minimal 18 minutes, uh, minimal time-wise. Um, I'm hoping it's going to be Buster Keaton and Laurel and Hardy, but we'll see when the organist has picked out which one. So, uh, And then we'll hopefully do some of that on, when we introduce the organ to the public on Saturday. So, uh, pipe, Most people associate a pipe organ with church. Mm -hmm. There's electronic organs and pipe organs. Pipe organs physically move air where an electronic organ is trying to simulate the true sound of what a pipe organ creates. An electronic organ is an imitation of a pipe organ. Um, they're both musical instruments, but this physically moves air. No matter how good an electronic organ gets, it will never be equal to a pipe organ because it does not move air. Just like an orchestra produces, every instrument produces a sound wave, the pipe organ does the same thing. Each pipe produces a sound wave in the room. Uh, you get that same physical experience of listening to a pipe organ that you do to a live orchestra. So it's a live instrument. Uh, this is a theater instrument uh, in that it was designed back in the 20s before there were talking movies to accompany silent movies. The organist had to provide all the background music, all the sound effects from telephone bells and drums and cymbals and uh, what the orchestra did. It was a one-man band. One so this orchestra. was built specifically for a silent, silent movie. movie theater. Uh, was built for uh, a Lincoln Dixie Theater in Chicago Heights in 1921. <music>theaters had them as well it was a uh, the, the pipe organ was a crown and the jewel of the theater to have a live organist and live music smaller theaters may have had just a pit piano uh, when premieres of movies came out they usually had a full orchestra uh, along with the organ and then after the uh, orchestra left it was just the organ to play before the show intermission and all the sound effects in the movies this is a Peterson uh, it's called an ICS 4000 it's a Solid state multiplexing system. Basically, it's a computer. What you see here replaces an entire room of switching, mechanical, uh, electro-pneumatic switching that ran the organ before. Where the organ originally had a cable about two inches in diameter connecting the console to the pipes, the entire instrument now is controlled by one wire. This wire is the only thing that connects the organ together. So it's a multiplexing system that scans all the controls, all the keys, 60 times a second, converts it to a binary code, sends it to the organ chamber where there's a decoder which breaks it down and assigns what is the play from the, from the console. You commented it's close to a telephone switching system. Uh, prior to uh, the in the 1920s, the, the most two complicated electronic things in the, the world were telephone switching systems and pipe organs. Uh, Robert Hope Jones, who invented it was the father of the American theater organ, uh, came from England, was a telephone engineer and applied his knowledge of telephones and telephone switching to pipe organs. Uh, we use telephone cables still to wire it because it's color coded. Uh, for the vast number of wires that we do have to wire, everything's color coded and telephone cable is still following the same principles and we use telephone cable to wire. Uh, we started installing the organ here late June, early July. Uh, it arrived and we started probably started the actual install installation in July sometime. So uh, it's been piece by piece, part by part, wire by wire, connection by connection for the last six to nine months. So. 
you said that this was like a full orchestra. So what sounds do you get from this? I mean, it triggers actual instruments behind There are you? sets of pipes that replicate uh, sounds of an orchestra, clarinet, uh, a tuba, trumpet, various flutes, various sounds of strings. We have pipes that actually sound like strings, like violins. Uh, plus the traditional sounds you people associate with an organ called a diapason. Uh, there's 15 sets of pipes up there, plus uh, a full percussion uh, division of a marimba, a xylophone, a celesta, orchestra bells, a set of chimes, uh, drums, tambourines, tom-toms, cymbals, Chinese gong, bird whistles, acne siren, car horns, uh, sleigh bells, uh, two different bird whistles, uh, what am I leaving out, tom-tom I think I said, triangle, castanets, uh, just to name a few. Okay, so we are now on the other side of that pipe organ, the, the facade side. there, right? We're up in the room here where the magic happens, sort of. So go ahead, tell us. The organ's a big box of whistles. The size of the pipe, the material of which it's constructed, its length and its shape all determine what it sounds like. The bigger the pipe, the lower the pitch. Pipes such as these here provide the bass sounds of the organ. Maybe we'll turn them on manually. Um, they're square wooden pipes. These conical pipes here are trumpets. Don't do this at home, you're not supposed to, but. The pipe actually sounds like a trumpet. The smaller the pipe, the higher the pitch. Uh, each, each key on the organ has a pipe corresponding with it, whatever rank it is. Whether they're trumpets or tubas or flutes uh, or string sounds, they all is, purpose. is there a maximum number that you can of instruments that you can do at a time? No, it's uh, just limit room you have. You need room to put it in. This is 15 ranks with a provision to add one more rank in orchestra logo when we find one. Uh, but the uh, uh, there's no maximum. The music dictates what you, how you register the organ to what stops you use and when. Organists are trained to learn to do that. These pipes here, wooden ones, are called diaphones. They were invented by Robert Bolt Jones, um, and then uh, the patent was taken over by the U.S. Coast Guard to make foghorns. These are the principle. These pipes operate on the same principle that foghorns operate off of. These were invented first. Foghorns were then copied from this principle. I can play one for you. They have a very deep, penetrating sound. sound strings. These are tubas here. They sound similar to the trumpet but different in characteristic. Other pipes such as these, these long skinny ones, are string pipes to simulate, uh, replicate the sound of a violin or viola from blowing a string. Pipes sit in a wind chest, which we completely restored and rebuilt in my shop. Uh, the air comes up from the blower through the various conveyances into regulators such as this that are filled with wind that hold the wind pressure steady. There's a large one behind you there. And that controls the wind pressure for each division, each chest uh, of the organ. This is opening <coughs> up a vast array of opportunity from uh, silent movies, uh, organ concerts, concerts with orchestra and organ, choral sings, community sings, seasonal events, Christmas and Easter, uh, other venues that we have instruments we've put in do wonderful things at Halloween for silent movies and uh, uh, Halloween silent movies like Phantom of the Opera or Hunchback of Notre Dame. Uh, we'll bring a lot of people in the area, a lot of revenue. The nearest theater organ available for public viewing, I think, from here is Cleveland 
I don't believe there's anything for public use east of here until you get into New York. Uh, south, you would have to go uh, for Theater, Oregon, down to Pittsburgh. Um, I've got one uh, in Boardman, Ohio, uh, a word that's from the Palace Theater, uh, but this is the only one probably in the 50 to 100 mile radius. So you're going to get a draw of a lot of people and your imagination is your limit for how you can use it.